Now let's talk about the five mistakes that home buyers make that you need to avoid. The first one is time in the market. Okay, you're six months to a year away from buying a home and you're saying, okay, uh, I wanna time the market. The problem with time in the market is that you spend a lot of time waiting for something magical to happen and you miss out on actually preparing for real opportunities. Example of this, um, about the difference between strategically uh, planning for the future and um, wishfully hoping for a miracle to happen, um, me and uh, my clients uh, met, uh, uh, we just closed on a home in Herndon, and we met, um, they found me on here on YouTube and gave me a call in around March, and we came up with a plan to buy a home in, in September. Now, think about what we had to deal with. The interest rates in March were very different from the interest rates in, in September. So that was a very big change. Inflation was also uh, different. But because we had a plan when we got to house hunting, we actually had all that we needed. We had all the money we needed. We had all of the we had all the the professionals we needed, the inspectors, the contractors. Everything we needed was all lined up for this because we prepared here. So that's strategically waiting, strategically planning. Now, hopefully, wishfully waiting or hoping for some magical moment in the market to happen typically happens with people who time the market want to time the market is they miss the market. The second mistake is having unrealistic expectations. I've talked about this before, I got it from, uh, I learned this from a, a good friend of mine uh, and, and mentor, Belle Tunstall. Uh, she talked about, um, you, there are three things you need to, uh, three main aspects to uh, consider when you want to buy a home in the DMV area. The price of the property, the place of the property, and the property itself. The price, how much is a house gonna cost? The place, where is it? What neighborhoods, what cities? Um, proximity to, to what, you know, uh, distance away from what. The property itself, what kind of house do you want? Do you want a condo, do you want a single family, do you want a, a, a multifamily, do you want a uh, townhouse, what do you want? Those three things. Now, in Northern Virginia and DMV area, you've gotta pick two. Two that you are gonna be committed to and one of those are gonna be uh, flexible on. Case Using the case study of my clients who closed in, in Herndon, uh, the, the two things that they really needed were the, the location, the place of the uh, of the property was, was very, 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 very important. Um, and the property itself, what, what they were actually looking for. These things really, really were, were the ones that they just were very committed to. So we had to be flexible on price. That's just how it goes. But because we started out you know very, very early, we were able to make it work down the line. So for you, it doesn't have to be that way. It's it's it, it's whatever combination of the two that are important for you, you decide, and then you, uh, you you you're flexible on the other piece, and that's how you have realistic expectations. And 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 the thing is that when you have realistic expectations, you get you give yourself the opportunity to explore and discover some of the options that are available that you may not even have considered, but they meet your needs. And the third mistake is very similar to the second one, and it's not being flexible. The thing about life, the thing about real estate, the thing about uh, being just a human being is that we all have limitations. But limitations are the constra constraints are the uh, doorways, the gateways to creativity. If you think about art, now, this is a painting that I did Good old Bob Ross uh, follow along. This canvas is all the space that I have. This I don't have this much space. I don't have this much space. I have this much space. And I have to utilize this space the best way that I can to create the image that I've got here. Your constraints are the same way in that they are the opportunity for you to fill in the space in ways that might whatever is in your head here will come out in the world in ways that you may not have anticipated but actually meet your needs and that's what's the most important. Not so much what's in here, but how what's in here becomes real in, in, in the real world. And so we, as you're flexible, you'll find out that the home that you have in your head, the way that it's put together in the real world, may not be exactly what you had in mind, but it may actually be exactly what you wanted the whole time. And it, and it ain't gonna be like this thing. This ain't, it ain't gonna be like this. It's gonna be like, Bob, you're gonna be like Bob Ross. Now, the fourth mistake that old buyers make is they lowball at the wrong 
time. They lowball in the wrong situations. Now, lowballing is, is a word that has a lot of negative connotations, but it's a common practice in the bargaining world. It's a common practice in, in the investing world. It really is uh, the practice of submitting an offer that is significantly lower than what a seller is requesting for particular reasons. Investors do this all the time because they are buying homes uh, for a low uh, cost because that is for a, that is the most amount that they are willing to offer because they've got expenses on top of that for remodeling, for renovating, for reselling, for renting, whatever the case may be. There's a reason why there's this massive gap between what they what a seller is asking for and what they're offering. That's really what lowballing is like. But there are there are certain situations or criteria that that a property or properties need to to have not all of them but most of them where lowballing actually makes a lot of sense. If a home just came on the market, it's got showings you know every single day, um, but you like and you like it, and the reason you say you know what the market's shifting, I'm going to offer them this much money, and for reasons of more about the uh, your, your lack of interest in paying what they're asking for rather than an actual strategy for why you're, you're offering low, that just leads to more frustration. If you lowball low too quickly, if you bring an offer that's too low too quickly, you're just gonna frustrate yourself and you're gonna spend time on that and you're gonna be missing out, missing out on an actual property where you could put in an offer that's reasonable and within your price range that actually works. What you really want to do is you want to remember the 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 uh, you want to have realistic expectations and be flexible so that you are being um, mindful of your affordability, what you can get and and being patient. It may not be it may not be right now, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to come. You just have to, you just have to have the pieces prepared so that you can uh, reach for an opportunity when it, when it presents itself. And the last mistake that uh, uh, home buyers make uh, is, is giving up too soon. It's no secret that it's very difficult to purchase a home right now. It's been very difficult to purchase a home in the last three years. It's been very difficult to purchase anything in the last three years. And that scenario can be very discouraging. It's like, well, it's not, you know, it's not happening for me and I can't afford a home, but all these other people are buying homes. That kind of situation can be uh, can be discouraging, especially if it's something that's a dream of yours, especially if it's something that's important for you and you've, you've been working so hard, you, you've been wanting it for a long time and just maybe don't even know where to start. And you just, and, and just the, the momentum of other people's uh, successes just uh, can, can weigh you down. And, and, and it causes a lot of people to say, you know what, I'll just put it on the back burner and, and wait for, you know, wait for something else or wait for some other time where I can do it. And my question to you is, if you want to give up right now, well, who told you that you cannot find what you're looking for? Who told you that you cannot come up with a plan that works for you? Who told you that you have to bring all the money required to purchase a house right now? Who told, where are you getting this information from? Because what I want to do is put the pause and maybe give a second opinion or a third or fourth or wherever you're coming from and, and, and watch this video, a different opinion about what is required and maybe give you some food for thought where you can say, okay, maybe uh, I'm getting this information from, you know, people that, you know, uh, are, you know, I trust, um, but maybe they haven't considered, you know, this thing. They haven't considered, you know, other people's money. They haven't considered uh, seller credits. They haven't considered, um, of being flexible on, on, on what you want. They haven't considered that maybe the house that I, I'm looking for um, might have a different configuration than what I keep um, thinking that it's it's supposed to have. So, th so the gist here is really just to uh, get you to think a little bit more about, you know, where is the information you're getting that that is making you reach the conclusion that you've got to give up now coming from. So that's that's it. That's all I got for you guys. You've got the money that you that you need. Now you can figure out how does this configuration, how is it going to work with my money and other people's money? And these five mistakes that people uh, uh, buyers make that you that that, that you've got to avoid, so that your dream that you want to make real can happen in a way that you are in the driver's seat the whole time. If this has been helpful for you, go ahead, subscribe to this channel, uh, follow along, hit your boy up, give me a thumbs up, you know, like the video, comment below, what, what, what did I miss? Or if in all of this, all that we talked about today, what, what have you heard and, or how have you made it, made it happen? How have you found a way amidst all that's gone on 
to make it happen. The reality is that it happens, closings happen every day. All we gotta do is figure out how to get you on that side of the closing table. That's all I got. Until next time, take care.